Today we are going to be discussing a very special pathogen, the Nigleria fowleri. The Nigleria fowleri is a very special pathogen because about 97% of people who get it do end up um, dying. It is a protozoan parasite. It is a single-celled amoeba and it is thermophilic, meaning that it loves the heat. The Nigeria family is only found in fresh water, so not in salt water. Um, it is obviously thermophilic, so it loves the higher temperatures. So most cases in the US have been documented in more Southern states like Texas and Florida. But unfortunately, as most things, climate change does not make this better. And we've actually seen the amoeba start to migrate more northward because of increasing temperature. The Nigeria fowler is mostly going to be found in those warm freshwater environments such as lakes and rivers, natural like geothermic hot springs. Unfortunately, it is very, very rare, but it can be found in industrial power plants, swimming pools, water heaters, and soil um, where it can feed off the bacteria and other microbes in that environment. There was one case that occurred in the 1970s and 1980s in Australia where there was nasal exposure to contaminated drinking water. The infections were actually linked to piping drinking water over land, sometimes hundreds of thousands of kilometers, um, that resulted in the water being heated and having very low to zero disinfectant levels, and that resulted in the water and the pipes being colonized by the Nigeria fowlery. Fortunately, in most swimming pools, you are safe. When they tested it under laboratory conditions and they added a concentration of one milligram to a liter of chlorine, the Nigeria fowlery was instantly killed and it killed 99% of them. However, it is important to note that in murky waters, it did kill less of them. It is important to quickly talk about the different stages that the Nigeria fowlery can be found in. The reason that it has these different stages is to help it survive in different kinds of environments. It can be in the cyst stage, which it just looks like a circle or with these little flagella on the back of it, so it's the flagellated stage. Um, this is the trophozoite stage, which is the stage that it's most often in, and it is the stage it's in when it enters through your nose. For example, since the Nigeria fowlery is mainly found in water, when they dried the trophozoites out, they were almost instantaneously non-viable, but the cysts lasted about five minutes not a big difference but um, sometimes it is a big difference when they refrigerated the trophozoites they were killed instantly um, but the cysts actually can last weeks to months in refrigerated temperatures above freezing um, and they provide a lot more protection from colder temperatures so when the nigeria fowlery is in freezing waters the cysts are often going to hide in the sediment and the um, in between rocks because it has very good protection from those colder temperatures. This is also why when the trophozoite enters your brain, it's not gonna use its cyst stage because the cyst stage is very good at colder temperatures and your body is a very high temperature. The Nigeria fowlery caused an infection called primary amoebic meningocephalitis, um, or for short, PAM. The Nigeria fowlery does not discriminate. Pretty much anyone can get infected with it. Um, however, it does disproportionately affect males and children. Scientists aren't sure, but the likely hypothesis for this is that males and children are just more likely to put their head under the water, dive into the water, which is gonna not only get water up your nose, but at a high pressure rate so it can get further into your nose. The pathogen is waterborne, but it cannot be spread through water vapor, and it has never been shown to spread from one person to another. The Nigeria fowlery um, infection can be diagnosed with cerebrospinal fluid, or CSF, and this fluid is found right in this area here. The doctor will take a needle and put it between the L3 and L4 vertebrae to extract the cerebral spinal fluid, which is called a spinal tap. And once you have this fluid, it can be examined microscopically and you will see those actively moving trophozoites in the fluid. 
You can also microscopically diagnose Nigeria Fowlery by staining the Nigeria Fowlery with a specific antibody for it. So let's say um, you jump into a freshwater pool on a hot um, summer day and there are some Nigeria Fowlery living in this freshwater lake. They happen to find their way up your nose when you dive in the water. When the Nigeria Fowlery first goes into your nose, it encounters your mucus or mucosa, and this mucus usually kills invaders, stuns them, and alerts the rest of the immune system. However, the Nigeria Fowlery does not care. The mucus does absolutely nothing to it. And the most deadly part of this is that the Nigeria Fowlery is able to go under the radar of the immune system so the mucus doesn't act as a way to alert the rest of the immune system that there is a pathogen in there. and the nigeria fowlery also doesn't really want to be there um doesn't know why it's in your nose it's a little confused until it goes all the way up to your olfactory nerves and now the nigeria fowlery is extremely intrigued and it is very excited to be there because they, there is a chemical released by the olfactory nerves called acetylcholine and the Nigeria Fowlery for some reason loves this chemical and so this attracts them. For about one to nine days after the Nigeria Fowlery is inside of your nose, you actually won't notice anything during this time. Your neutrophils will try to stop them. They will try to grab them and rip them apart and engulf them. However, the Nigeria Fowlery is so large that this pretty much does nothing. Unfortunately, um, if there is a lot of neutrophils, a group of them, they can end up ripping the parasite apart and engulfing it. But by this point, after you have your multiple neutrophils working on this, there's already so many other Nigeria Fowlery. Because it takes so many neutrophils to just attack one Nigeria Fowlery, all these other Nigeria Fowlery are going to get through, and it's pretty much just a numbers game from there. Um, at this point, it's kind of like a war. The Nigeria Fowlery is really only slowed down by the neutrophils in the long run. Until the Nigeria Fowlery goes past these olfactory nerves and into the olfactory bulb, which is right here, which is the center of your smell and the entrance to your brain. So the Nigeria Fowlery takes the, the olfactory bulb to the olfactory tract and into your brain. This is where things start to really escalate. So the Nigeria Fowlery loves the acetylcholine and the brain tissue releases the acetylcholine. This obviously attracts the Nigeria Fowlery and in response, the Nigeria Fowlery releases molecules that actually tear, that actually rip holes in your brain tissue after it is ripped holes in your brain tissue. The leftover smaller pieces of brain tissue are consumed by the Nigeria Fowlery. <laughs> At this point, the Nigeria Fowlery is pretty much starting a full-fledged war with your immune system. It is not only multiplying, but it also begins to develop these terrifying food cups, which are like giant suction mouths. And what these mouths do is they engage your brain tissue, which is, means that they attach to them. And then they actually suck the brain tissue up and rip large bites out of it. Finally, the rest of your immune system is alerted because of the massacre of millions and millions of neutrophils. And the immune system starts to send in eosinophils. and microglia. However, by the point that the immune system is alerted and starts to send all of these um, fighters essentially, it actually is doing more harm than good because the way that your immune system works is kind of like burning down the entire forest just to kill the wolf. And when that is your brain, that is a very dangerous thing to do. These invaders try to use chemicals to eat the Nigeria Fowlery while the neutrophils actually explode themselves in order to make a barrier that is lined with lots of 
deadly chemicals but the nigeria fowlery is so powerful that it fights back at the immune system and it just kills most of the um, immune cells and at this point the immune system gets really stressed out and starts to go into overdrive like i said before the immune system is not very careful about what it damages as long as it's getting the pathogen out so it kind of starts to send all these chemicals and trying all the techniques it has pulling out all the stops and unfortunately in the process it starts to destroy your brain while this battle between your immune system and the nigeria fowlery is ensuing there is something called the complement system and usually what happens is a protein will fit right in here and bind to that receptor and it releases a little protein bomb that can kill invaders. However, the Nigeria Fowlery actually disables this, almost like you have a little disable button right here, and the Nigeria Fowlery sends out chemicals that bind to this disable receptor and then these proteins no longer bind to this receptor and it pretty much disables the entire system. The antibodies that your immune cells will try to release The Nigeria Fowlery easily just eats and swallows. At this point, you finally start showing symptoms and they escalate very quickly and are very severe. You're gonna obviously have a fever in hopes to burn the Nigeria Fowlery out. However, the Nigeria Fowlery loves the heat, so it is very happy in high temperatures. So this pretty much does nothing except actually help the Nigeria Fowlery. You're also going to experience symptoms like a headache, nausea, vomiting, seizures, inability to concentrate, hallucinations. Also, at this point, the immune system is going to cause lots of inflammation by sending protein-rich fluid to the site of infection. As the brain begins to swell more and more because of the inflammation, it starts to press against your skull and Unfortunately, it doesn't have room to swell. Now that the brain has started swelling more and more and hitting the skull, it actually starts compacting. And when it does this, it unfortunately squeezes your brain stem, which pretty much controls everything that keeps you alive, like your heartbeat and your breathing. And unfortunately, because the brain stem is so important, the patient usually ends up dying within a week. There is actually protocol for a few things that we do use to treat the Nigeria Fowlery infection. It's usually treated with a combination of drugs, often including Amphitrine B, Enzithrin, Sync, Flam, Con, Azole, Mazolfin, and Dexmelasone. Melifazone is the newest of these drugs and it has been used um, in three survivors and it has been shown in the lab to kill Nigeria Fowlery. Treatments also include hypothermia. There actually has been a few people who have survived the Nigeria Fowlery pathogen. Um, there was a 12 year old girl who made a full neurological recovery and actually returned to school after. The success of the survival was really attributed to the Maleficone drug, um, the hypothermia treatment, and the early diagnosis, which is honestly the most important part because once your immune system has started to attack the Nigeria Fowlery, your immune system is almost what's destroying you. So. If you can prevent that immune response from happening, the um, pathogen will be a lot less deadly. There was also an eight-year-old boy who did survive, but he suffered permanent brain damage. And in this case, they did not use hypothermia as a treatment. There was also a 16-year-old boy, which is treated with the same protocol as a 12-year-old girl, and he made a full recovery. If I were to get this virus, I would definitely want the hypothermia treatment because this amoeba is thermophilic and it loves loves the heat so if you could bring your body temperature down safely enough the environment would no longer be suitable and presumably kill the pathogen i would also predict that if you wanted to make some type of vaccine for the nigeria fowlery which you probably would never do because it's so rare um but i would see if you could inhibit your olfactory nerves from releasing the acetylcholine because if your olfactory nerves didn't release that, the Nigeria Fowlery wouldn't be attracted to them. And so I would think that the Nigeria Fowlery wouldn't infect you. So overall, 
very scary, um, but kind of a cool pathogen.